there's fear, there's uncertainty in, in, in chasing your dreams and, and going after that. You know what I mean? And there's a lot of rejection. There's a lot of criticism that doesn't even have to come from you. That comes from the outside world, you know? And you got to build that resilience, you know, saying like, it's important for me to know why I do it. So I'm like, yo, I, I do it for me. So if you don't like it, that's cool. You don't have to. I'm not. I'm no longer trying to get everybody to like what I do. The people that's gonna like it and understand it are gonna like it and understand it, man. But like, I'm 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 following my heart, man, and I'm doing what's right for me. You know, Gabe always when you ask him about Brothers Keeper, he always says it's about letting go of who you think you have to be so that you mm. can be who you're meant to be. Mm. You know, and and, and that and that's part of it you know me releasing and not like letting other people's visions or expectations of life become mine or stop me because it's easy man so some days you got to be resilient man and and so for me it's like so when i wake up and i'm and i'm depressed and and the world feels dark i i have this thing that i always say and it always pops into my head and it's faith only counts in the darkness so if I really believe in what I'm doing, this is the time I got to prove it. Like It's easy to believe when I'm winning awards. You took, you took that right out of my mouth. I was going to follow up and ask you this depression, this sadness that comes along with just this thing we call life. You know, there's no way around it. Um, I was going to ask you what coping skills you use to um, manage your trauma, not trauma, excuse me, your, your, your depression. Um, you named one as you have a mantra, you know, that you use that reminds you of why you're doing what you're doing. Are there other coping skills that you use? Is there, um, you know, things that you can share with the audience that, you know, how you get through those dark days or dark nights or dark weeks, months, whatever? Man, it's different every time, man. But mainly, like, one of the things I do is, like, man, cake and donuts make me happy. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> hey, that shit is crazy. And I'm not suggesting that for everybody. But for me, it's one of the things. I also, I I'm, I'm meditate. Like, quieting my mind is a big part of it. Because what I realize, like, when I'm depressed or when I'm sad is, is when I'm buying into the idea that I'm not where I'm supposed to be. Right, mm. I go into depressions when when the vision of my future isn't clear, or I feel like I don't have it right now. You know, so I become so, sad. I'm, I'm, you just made me think of something else. So it sounds like you use your depression as a, a marker now. So when it does come, you're saying to yourself, "Okay, what is not clear? Yeah, what am I my self worth to?" And if that, go ahead. I'm, no, yeah, yeah, no, no, right. And so then I'm like, so what? What is it? Why am I sad? Is it real? Is that a real thing? No, nah, it's not a real thing. And when I start to identify what's making me sad or depressed, and I and then I'm like, is it real? No, nah, it's not real. If it is real, okay, what do I do right now to counter that? And then I go right into that. You know what I mean? So, it, so I like that. It seems like um, you know we all go through periods of sadness for whatever, whatever reason. And it's, it's easy to stay in that emotional quicksand. It's easy to stay there and feel like you're drowning. Um, but you seem, it seems like you've developed a technique where you say, okay, I don't feel like myself right now. What is it? What did I say to myself? What did I say to somebody else? What, what, what did I do? So you're making it more logical and making it more tangible now. So instead of quicksand drowning in emotions, you're like, hold on, these emotions didn't just come from nowhere. You mm -hmm. know, something that I did or I didn't do to manifest them, and that helps you to, you know, manage your your stress levels, your your anxiety, your depression in this case. Yeah, that yeah. And, and, and and then and so I don't like again like a big part is I, I don't I don't judge myself I don't I, I like try not to get down on myself even if I'm sad some days I'm sad I'm like yeah, yeah I get oh it. I get it I see what you does you can I feel 
I can't speak for everyone, you can really judge yourself for being down, which is just kind yeah. of the Yeah. You're like, you're already down and then you're kicking yourself in the ribs. You know what I mean? Like. Right, right. You're already sad and then you're like, oh, I'm a loser for being sad. And it's like. <laughs> for being sad. So identifying that I feel a certain way and allowing yourself just to be with yourself without judging you. That comes up a lot today too. You're talking about a lot, not judging, not judging. And I, I, there's, there's a lot of value to that, you know? So I, I think for me, that's one of my most in, in, important, like, things that I've been working on, you know, uh, not not judging myself, because most of the time, like, if I sit down and judge myself, I'm, it's going to take forever. And I'm going to be depressed or I'm going to be angry because what I'm judging myself is based off of somebody else's vision. Like, when I, when I judge myself, it's based off of something that society told me or someone mm -hmm. else told me I'm supposed to be doing or supposed to be. But why can't I just be where I am? Why do I have to be where you want me to be? Like, just mm -hmm. regular. Let me do Let me do what I'm doing right now. I'm, and I'm going to get where I got to go, right? Mm -hmm. So a, a lot of it is based off of, like, my own decisions and discoveries that I've made through my self-actualization, through my self-inventory. It's my shit. I'm not accepting other people's beliefs anymore. If they're in line with me, I will learn from them and, and tie them into my way of living. But if they not, I'm getting rid of that. I don't have time for that. I'm making adjustments. Back to that inventory, you go inside your, open that door to the back room of your mind like an owner would do to the back room of the store, going through the shelves and taking off for the shelves when it's not needed. It's, it's expiration date is on it. It was needed in the past. I used to sell Fruit Loops, but now I don't sell. I hope this metaphor is not confusing people, but um, you take those Fruit Loops off the shelf, throw it in the garbage, and you don't order no more Fruit Loops. You know what I mean? And and so it goes, and 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 it. Right, and that's what I'm talking. So, so, and I'm glad you said that because that that ties into the other part of like the self inventory and and how to use it. Because now, uh, I'm conscious of what I absorb, mm -hmm. whether it's eating, whether it's watching, whether it's reading. Everything about that comes into my life is a conscious decision. And if this is my main frame, if I am the the computer system, then I am actually. I am consciously choosing what information is being processed by my mainframe. So I don't, yeah. I, I don't read stuff that's not in tune with where I want to be. I don't eat stuff that's not in tune with where I want to be. And that's including the cake. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I don't, and yeah. I don't, I don't watch <laughs> stuff that's not connected to where I want to go. You know what I mean? Like, and, and if I, really I do, I don't judge myself for it, but it's a conscious choice. It's not like mindless. Yeah. I see what you're saying because I, I go through this out when I'm out in the, about in the world and we're talking about the COVID um, and people are, <laughs> they're upset and they're angry. And as I continue to talk with them, they bring up the news. And, and, and so back again, we have to be counterintuitive sometimes because we want to be in touch. We want to know what's going on. We don't want to be ignorant. So you should watch the news but what you're saying is that since you're aligned with who you are and what feels best for you, you can monitor how much you watch, what you watch, when you watch it, you know, and what to believe and what not to believe. Yep. So you don't, so you don't have to have that burden on you of anger that, you know, I've witnessed, you know, from people who, you know, have this, I don't want to say addiction to the news, but have this need to be in front of the TV and, and embody opinions that are not their own. You know, they're, they're really just, you know, believing what somebody told them without verifying. So my, my overall point to wrap that in a bow is when you do that inventory, it's about verifying. It's about yeah. knowing what's good for you, what's not good for you, what's working. Because what was working on Monday probably ain't working on Thursday. So you really have to... No. It changes every day. You know, it's kind of like, uh, uh, you know, we got people, uh, uh, I know a lot of people who be like, oh, you know, drama, this, everything they talk about is drama. And there's so much drama in their life, right? And then when I watch them or I'm with them, it's, it's like, 
You're watching World Star. You're watching, you're reading like beef news. You're reading this and that. Like, so all they're talking about all this drama, like their life is drama, and everything that they're consuming is drama. Um, right? So they're just amplifying it. And of course, if like that's what you're consuming, if that's what you're ingesting all day, every day, you are what you eat. I, I'm telling you, man, I don't watch like none of that stuff, bro, because I don't want it in my system. And that's a conscious choice. I've done it and I don't knock people for doing it, but. It's what you choose. Yeah. So what do you do in your system? What, what Walk us through a day in the life of Javier, what he consumes. It could be emotionally, uh, through literature. Uh, we already know you like the cake. It could be through nutrition. What what <laughs> What do you consume and what? What provides you with the best sense of self and provides you with the most energy to complete your daily tasks? So let's see. Hold on. I, if, I, if, I, if I ran down like my schedule, say, for tomorrow, right? I wake up. One of the first things I do is meditate. Like, that, that's for me. That's my consumption. Like quiet my mind, check in with my stuff, just breathe. I love breathing these days. That's how I handle a lot of my problems, you know, especially when I'm about to react. I take a moment, I take a deep breath, and I process, okay, what are you reacting about? What's really happening? You know what I mean? But so, like, I'll meditate. I'll, um, I'll watch a lot of, like, master classes or a lot of, like, old films and old documentaries with, like, of, of, of artists in my field talking. I want to hear what mm -hmm. they're going to say, you know what I mean, how their process is. Um, I, I read a lot, so I read a lot of the old masters. Right now I'm reading a book called... Uh, the psychology of color. And so that, you know, color is a big part of my films. And so I, I want to know what like psychological implications come with different types of colors and how I could use them to make people feel things without them even knowing that they're feeling it or being aware of it, you know? So um, working. Huh? Sounds like you're working your craft. That's what you... Fine tuning it. Fine, fine tuning it like self-contained, you know what I mean? So I'm like, or, and, and, and working out, you know, and then writing and, and then um, reading and having discussions about plays and talking to other artists. So every part of my day, everything that I'm consuming is tied into my mind, body, or soul and the things that I want to like nurture in myself. So I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm nurturing my artists or, or my, my filmmaking ability. So I read things about like making films and how other artists made films. I'm really conscious of how I speak to my actors and how I guide them. So I write, I read books by like Stanislavski or Vaktangov or, or Lee Strasberg about the art of communicating with actors and the actor problem and how to help them overcome their things. You know what I mean? Um, I think I'm a, I plan to live to 150. So I'm very conscious about how I eat, like not having, like cutting out meat and eating more vegetables and stuff like that. So if you look at my whole day, everything that I put into my system is either tied into making me spiritually stronger, mentally stronger, artistically stronger, or physically stronger. And that's the choice. That's a conscious choice. Conscious. Yeah. Don't, I, I, there's very few things at this point in my life that I do unconsciously. And I mean, like, without making that decision, because, you know, we all do unconscious shit. Like, I actually believe there's a thing that um, Stanislavski used to say, you know, and I think it ties into everything. And he goes, conscious preparation leads to unconscious results. Mm, right. Can you elaborate more? That's, that's, that's so, never. Right. So, so. Right now, everything that I'm putting into my system is uh, conscious, whether what I'm reading, eating, watching, everything. And so what happens is I start dreaming of films or, or I'll be like sitting down and, and an idea will pop into my head for a new film or, or something to explore and wonder. These are un yeah. things that are coming out of my unconscious. Love I love it. I don't know if you remember that book back in the day. We, we read Power to Subconscious Mind by, um, I want to say, Joseph Murphy. Um, it was written in the 60s, and he, he, he alluded to how we can reprogram, reprogram ourselves by reprogramming our subconscious mind. So if I hear you correctly, all the data that you process through the day 
once you close your eyes to rest, you start processing it through the night via dreams, yeah. via intuition, via, you know. Everything. Through, through, through walking, through Satori. Yeah. Through walking, through through uh, walking events. You know what I mean? Like I, I process a lot while I'm walking, you know, mm. through daydreams, you know. Mm. So the more, the, the more connected you are with what you're ingesting, the more conscious you are about what you're putting in, the more power you're giving your unconscious or your subconscious to give you powerful, kick you back powerful information. You know what I mean? You start to create unconsciously. It just, you're living into it. So you're like in the process of living, you're not even aware like, oh, you know, I'm I'm gonna come home, I'm gonna lay back, but you lay back and your brain is still creating, your unconscious is still giving you like these, these power thoughts. Yeah, success. Word. Success. Yeah. yeah. Um, um. What do you say we wrap it up soon? Um, it's been a, it's been a, it's been it's very. For for all you guys who don't know, this is my first ever interview. Um, I called my brother Javier, uh, CEO of another Every Days of Every Days of Monday. Yeah. Every Monday's production, and um, he he said, "Sure, just give me a call." Um, so I'm, I don't have no interviewing skills. I don't have anything but the desire to do this. The, that Satori hit me. Um, Actually, and, you do have interviewing skills because you, you were building off the of things I was saying. So I don't know if you were taking notes, but you were like, yo, you said this and you reverted back. So yeah, you, that, yeah. that's the process of, of you're a really good listener. Yeah. Thank you, man. I really, don't have wanted, I really wanted to give you my attention completely. You know, and I felt comfortable doing that with you. And, and I can't forget the talented people that are help, helping build Satori. You know, it's not just me. It's it's a crew of three, uh, four of us all together. And um, they really help this come to life. You help this come to life. So if there's anything you want to share with the community um, that will be listening or tuning in, um, maybe a, maybe some, some advice you want to give or something that has to deal with COVID, anything. It's your open forum. And also, please plug what you're doing and what you are about and, and the businesses, the business that you're building as well. Uh, yeah, I don't know, man. You know, that that's a lot. I, I would say this, if I'm sharing anything, man, is, is learn to listen to understand versus listening to reply. And I think you did that. I, I experienced that with you today when you listen. And I think you do it a lot. You, you always, something that you've, consciously started working on and now you just do it it's unconscious you know but you listen to understand i could i had that sense when we were we were having this discussion and i think that that's an important part of being mindful and and of moving like through life in a wholesome way so that's that's my thing man learn to listen to understand versus listening to reply um and that's it man i don't don't really know man i don't I, i don't know much i'm not i don't pretend to know shit i just i follow my instinct you know uh david lynch was saying something the other day and and he said uh your gut or your instinct he calls it feel thinking because it's Mm -hmm. thinking with your emotions you know what i mean and and, um I i thought that was cool man i've always been in connected with my instincts or my gut you know my intuition in, in yeah. intuition that's the word i was i'm looking for you so know, now i did me in the in, in 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 the counseling therapeutic side of life um um i could refer to a daniel goldman in his um his landmark book emotional intelligence he wasn't the first person to come up with this concept of course but he's the one that you know it popped when he wrote the book and um the value of being emotionally intelligent is just as valuable as your IQ, your your, uh, your quotient, your intellectual quotient. You know, where in the past times it was just your IQ that was thought to be. It was, excuse me, um, it was just your IQ that was needed or thought they thought that was needed to to succeed in life. But now in this this in this modern age, it's very important to be emotional intelligent. So you can um, have these social skills. You can look look another person in their eyes and and read their body language and get a get an understanding of how you feel compared to what you 
you you observe through that nonverbal communication. And the list goes on and on and on and how important emotional intelligence is. And it seems like that's something that you you made that a staple in your in your in your work, um, in your personal work and in your your, your field. Um, relying on that feeling, that intuition, you know, even when you said you were on the block, you know, hustling, you know, you still had this, you were aware that you were having images of a greater success. You could have been having those images and not been aware. Yeah. And you could have just been by them. So, you know, you, you, I, I commend you as well in terms of your growth and your development, you know, um, and it's a pleasure to, to interview you and, um, it's a pleasure to get the people that are going to watch this and witness this, get to meet you. Um, Cause I think the saying of don't judge a book by its cover is becoming more prevalent for our culture. You know, mm -hmm. when, you know, when we were young, we were looked at as super predators and super thugs, you know, we were very dangerous to mainstream, but now it seems like, um, and I don't know if you have any feedback for our audience that, that doors are opening and we're being listened to more now our, our opinions being valued and um and um you know all of that all of that i just said came from what you just said so thanks for that <laughs> I, <laughs> I love that bro yeah it's crazy it, it, it's crazy to see how in demand we are but i think that we're, we're a rare breed man when you mix that like street smarts with that book smart bro yeah. And, and life smart, you know, it, yeah. it, um, <laughs> not many people have had these kind of experiences, you know, their, their experiences come from things they watched or they wrote. Whereas like, mm -hmm. <coughs> we, um, we learned the hard way, man. And I'm, I'm grateful for that. Like, uh, you know, whereas before those are the things that I judged myself for. And now those are my superpowers. I'm like, Oh, oh, okay. You know, it's okay to be different. Yeah. Actually, yeah, I applaud that. Yeah, absolutely. And like going back to what you said earlier, embracing who you are non judgmentally allows your gifts to blossom. You know, before we, you're suppressing your gifts, um, you know, gifts that we innately have. Now you're, 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 you're watering that soil and giving that soil light and, and allowing it to, that seed to, to, to come up out the ground. Mm -hmm. You know, and everything struggles to come out the ground by the innate process of being a seed turning into a flower. Um, so I'm going to ask you a question. One of two questions I just want to ask you. Uh, what's your favorite book? I think... Of all time. Of all time. I, I You know, it's funny. I, I think it's Conversations with God. Ooh, Neil Donald Walsh, I believe, right? Neil Donald that? Walsh, that first book. Yeah, I think that was like, that, that was so impactful for me because it was the first time that I was like... Oh, <laughs> I, 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 what I feel is not crazy. Mm. You know, there were things in that book, like one of my favorite quotes comes from that book. And, and he says, um, sometimes you got to show them who you're not so they can appreciate who you are. Mm. You know, and I, that's the, those are the contradictions in life. You know, I'll be telling people, I'm like, yo, man. Sometimes you got to slap somebody so they could appreciate your kindness. You know, be like, oh, I, you know, I'd rather see him smile. Let Everybody him smile. out there listening, we're not advocating you go out and slap people to reach your success. I just want you to know that. Yeah, no, I, actually, I, I, I promote the opposite. You got to learn that that doesn't solve anything. So we should probably yes, edit that yeah. out. <laughs> yeah, edit that out. Jaylene, Jaylene, no, let me stop. Um, so I asked you that your favorite book, your favorite movie of all time. Somewhere between right now, I would say, uh, man, there's so many filmmakers, but probably between 2001 Space Odyssey or, or like Citizen Kane, you know, um, somewhere mm. in that world, maybe Kane. even from another the influence. Mm. I just went through okay. three different like, uh, artists but anyway yeah somewhere in there I, I love i love a lot of the old films man they, they they were so ahead of their time and so artistic and information was revealed in a, in a different way one artist you would like to work with one actor you would like to 
work with? An actor that I would like to or work with. Actor, actor. I'm not sure. I mean, there's a lot of people I, I, I want to work with for different reasons. You know, I, I would love to, um, I just had somebody in my head today. Uh, 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 uh. So I, I guess I won't put a specific name on it, but there's a couple artists who I think have been close to like, the, say the pinnacle of their success, like say winning an Oscar or something, right? And when I look at their work, I'm like, Oh, I think that I, if we had some conversations, I could get you over that edge. Mm, success. Yeah, thank you. Okay, last question. When you hear this phrase, do that work, what does that mean to you? That's self-inventory, man. Doing that work is sitting down and, and learning to be comfortable with yourself learning like who you really are. I mean, the more the more I get to know myself, the more I'm able to challenge the world around me you know I mean? mm. and, and live into it freely. Mm. That, that, that's that work for me, man, because like success is uh, being able to spend a week, a month alone. <laughs> You know, I tell you, I've been wanting to go on one of these silent retreats. I'm just like, <clears throat> I actually, I actually enjoy my own company. Mm. I don't have a beef okay. with my ego. So, success. Or, All right, brother. Um, anything else you want? You want to do a quick plug for yourself and who you're working with and what you're working on for people look uh, out for you? Yeah, man. Real Talk Films. Go to realtalkfilms.com and um. Check out Wonder, man. We premiered July. I'm lying. Check out Wonder. We premiered June 1st on HBO Latino. And after June 1st, we'll be on HBO Go and all HBO platforms, man. So check us out. We're about to do some things. We're creating a series. And um, whenever we get out of this, we'll be, uh, we'll be shooting a movie and shooting a TV series. And all these things are, are, are happening. It's manifested, you know? Uh, which is, Word, yeah. man. It's crazy. Yeah. Long right? time coming. Long yeah. time coming. And if you can come, like, you know, from our background to get where we are now, man, like, anything is possible. It's just, like, are you willing to put in that work, man, and and and, and do it because you love it and not because somebody else is telling you to do it? And if that's yeah. the way you operate, that's cool, too. I ain't judging you, you know? You know, yeah. it's his own, man, but you should know why you're doing it. And if it's... It should be a conscious choice. I don't yeah. know. But right. success to you, bro. I'm I'm loving this, man. Word, man. Satori, that <laughs> actually makes all the sense in the world. And I think it organically came up several times without us, like, not, not yeah. even trying to, like... Wait a minute. Satori. He just said Satori. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, so the Umbrella, Satori is just a piece of the Umbrella's project, Thorian. You know, so... um. You know, thank you again. Thank everybody for listening and tuning in. Um, we're gonna have some more. Um, we're gonna have some more to feed you as the weeks and months go on. Different people, different angles, all with the purpose of mental health and wellness. But our our intent or vision, whatever you want to call it, we think that there's a lot of people, regular people that are very talented out here. You know, we're trying to capture them. We're not really trying to go after, you know, people you've seen already on TV or because we think the freshest water is at the bottom of the valley, not at the top. So you're going to see some content come out for us, and I hope hopefully you'll enjoy. We want you guys to give us feedback and comments so we can better our skill set and better, um, better what we do um, to provide a better experience for you guys. So, um Aha, uh -huh. thanks again. God bless my brother. Word. And, um, talk to you soon, all right? All right. Love you, King. Love you, King. Satori. Success.